So now we've got the endpoints for the API up and running, but at the moment we're just sending back some dummy data responses. In actual fact, we want to communicate with the database in these functions to either retrieve some data in our get request handlers or add or delete and update data in the other request handlers. So to do this, we'll be using MongoDB, which is a NoSQL database. And that means instead of using tables with rows and columns inside the database, like a SQL database would, instead it uses documents, which resemble JSON objects. And it makes it really simple to work with from a node application that uses JavaScript. So we could install MongoDB locally on our computer and hook the application up to that. But instead, I want to use a service called MongoDB Atlas, which allows us to spin up a database online and have it fully configured and hosted for us. And that makes things much easier for us as developers. All right then, so to set up a free database online, head to mongodb.com forward slash atlas forward slash database. And you'll need to sign in or create an account before you try to create a database. I'm just gonna log in with Google and it's just gonna take a minute or maybe an hour in my case. But then when it does eventually load, you should see a page that looks like this. So we wanna create a database. So let's click on this build a database uh, button and then we wanna go for the free option right here, create a shared cluster. We wanna choose a cloud provider. So we're gonna stick with AWS and then choose a region. I've gone for this one, Ireland, but you can choose a different one if you wish. And if we go to the bottom, we can name our cluster as well. I'm just gonna call this Mern app like so. So let's create the cluster. And it's just gonna take a few minutes to create that. But while it's creating it, you can create an admin username and password to get access to your database. So just fill those in right here and create the user. I've already created one in the past. You can see I've got one called Mario and the password is over here. So if I go to database access, I can see that user already created, but you'll need to create a username and password to access your database. And also go down here to network access. I'm going to delete this one right here. This is no longer mine. So let me delete this one like so. And then you can add an IP address. So you can click on this right here to allow access to your database from anywhere, which is a little bit of a security risk. Or you can use this to add your current IP address. Now, if your IP address changes from time to time, you might need to come back here every now and then and just create a new entry to add your current IP address and delete your old one. So I'm going to do that in a second, but make sure you do that as well. And then if you go back to the database, then you should see by now it's created this for us. Now, what I can do is I can click on browse collections. I'm not gonna do that, but if I did this, it will let me browse the different collections of data that we have in our database. Now, at the minute there's none, but later there's gonna be a collection called workouts where we'll store all of our workouts data or documents. What we wanna do is connect to the database from our application. So we can click on this connect button to do that and connect to your application right here. This is the connection string we need to connect to the database from our node application. So copy that and obviously later we need to update this with our password right here. You should see your username right here or if you don't, you might see something like username in angle brackets. Either way, we'll update our username and password later on. But for now, just copy this and close. So first off, I'm gonna to head to the .env file and add a new variable called mongo underscore URI. And I'm gonna set it equal to the connection string that I just copied. I'm also gonna add in my username and the password to this string as well. Otherwise, we're just gonna be denied access to the database. And by the way, make sure you've got your own string right here and don't just copy this one that I'm using because by the time you watch this video, this database won't even exist. So it's not gonna work. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is install a package now called Mongoose, which is gonna help us when we're working with our database. So open up a terminal and cancel out of any process first of all, then type npm install mongoose and you wanna hit enter. So Mongoose is what's known as an ODM library and ODM stands for Object Data Modeling. It basically wraps MongoDB with an extra layer that allows us to use methods to read and write database documents. And it also gives us a way to declare models and schemas to ensure a more strict data structure. 
For example, I could make a schema for a blog document which says every blog must have a title, a body, and an author property, and it must all be strings as well. And then if we try to save a blog document to the database without any of those properties, Mongoose wouldn't let us. So it adds that extra layer of structure that MongoDB alone doesn't give us. We're also gonna use Mongoose to connect to the database inside the server.js file as well. And to do that, the first thing we need to do is import Mongoose or require it. So we're gonna say const Mongoose is equal to a require and we wanna require the Mongoose package, awesome. So now we can use this object to connect to the database and we'll do that down here below where we register the routes. So I'll do a little comment to say connect to db and then under that we'll say mongoose and then use a method on that called connect and then inside here we need to pass in our uri the connection string now remember we added that to the environment variables right here so we just need to use this one mongo underscore uri so let me come back over to server.js and say process dot env dot mongo underscore uri and this will go out and try and connect to the database. Now it's asynchronous in nature. It takes a little bit of time to do. And so therefore it returns a promise and we can tack on a dot then method to fire a function when it's complete. And we can also tack on a catch block to catch any kind of error if there is one. Now, if there is an error, we'll just log that to the console, console.log error like so. And so this might happen if the URI is incorrect, let me spell that correctly, URI, or if the username or password is not correct as well. We'll try that later. But for now, we want to do something inside this then function as well. So what do we want to do after we've connected to the database? Well, think about it. We don't want to start accepting any kind of requests or listening for requests until we've connected to the database. So what we're gonna do is grab this stuff right here where we start listening for requests and we're gonna paste it in here instead. And now we're only gonna be listening for those requests once we've connected to the database, all right? So we're gonna try this out. And to begin with, what I'm gonna do is change my username so it's incorrect. So just marry to begin with. And now if I open up the terminal, I'm gonna cancel out of the current process and I'm gonna to try to run this again. And we might see an error now from MongoDB. And we can see that right here, this error object. And it says, Mongo server error, bad auth authentication failed. So it's not allowing me to access the database because these credentials are not correct. But if I change this back to Mario now and save it, I'm gonna come down here and cancel out of the process. And I'm gonna clear the screen and try to run this again. NPM run dev. Hopefully we won't see an error now. And instead, we're just gonna see this message down here logged to the server. So in fact, we'll change this to connected to DB and listening on port, whatever the port is, okay? So let's save this and let's run it, fingers crossed. We should see that message. Yep, we do, connected to the database and listening on port 4000, awesome. So this is all working. Now we've created our database. We have our connection string right here and we're using that to connect to the database along with Mongoose. So in the next lesson, we're gonna talk a little bit more about how we can create Mongoose schemas and models to structure the data that we wanna save to the database.